Hi there, welcome to our physics performance class. I'm Nelson and I'm in, I'm in a group with Raouf, Andy, Melvin and Keen. So what you see here is our model of a home circuit. I'd say the most striking thing about this circuit is the aluminium wires that run around the circuit and this conductive material is both cheap and easy to install. So, we decided to use the ring circuit because it allows each appliance to function independently, but we chose it over a parallel circuit, given its ease of expansion as well as its ability to withstand problems such as voltage drop. Also, it will allow us to position our appliances more ideally next to the rings, without it having cumbersome wires reaching through the middle of the room. Additionally, the area in the middle here, which represents a room, is left empty without intrusive wires, as said before. For the record, this inner ring is the negative potential ring and the outer ring is the positive potential. In our circuit, the LEDs each represent a television, air conditioner, electric blanket and reading lamp. Each individual component runs parallel and thus does not affect other components' usage. This also means that every component receives the full voltage from the battery. Thus, for the LEDs, we need to connect a 330 ohm resistor in series to drop the current down to 0.0273 amperes. Unfortunately, we do not have an individual switch for each component. This PTC thermistor is meant to represent the heating element in an electric blanket. As the current runs through the PTC and its resistor, the PTC self heats and its resistance increases, but not indefinitely. It limits to a minimum the current that passes through itself once reaching its peak temperature, ensuring that it will not overheat and break. This makes it useful for use as a heating element. The heating element in an electric blanket indeed does work on a similar principle. We also incorporated an LDR into our potential divider segment of our circuit. When the LDR is in darkness, its resistance is very high. As such, a large proportion of the voltage is given to this section, letting a higher amount of current to pass through it and thus the LED shines. However, if the LDR is exposed to light, its resistance drops and a smaller proportion of the voltage is present, and thus less current flows through the LED, making it either dimmer or switch off altogether. This segment of our circuit is especially useful for eco-friendly lights which only run at night time and are off in the day. This system therefore saves electricity. In addition, we came up with our dimmer switch. We made it out of 330 ohm resistors connected in series with the LED. The amount of current passing through the LED is adjusted by shifting the blue wire up and down the row of resistors. Placing the wire closer to the LED will cause the LED to be as dimmest. Shifting it towards the outer ring will cause it to be as brightest since the resistance is the least. We decided on this design as resistors are small and cheap, as compared to coiled wire. Also, its design is small compared to other variable resist resistors which may incorporate a graphite rod or coiled up spring, which require a large adjusting distance before the light is able to be dimmed. We also include a two-way switch in our circuit. When both wires are connected as such, the current is able to flow through into the bulb holder to the bulb and cause it to light up. Once you switch the wires as such, the circuit is not completed for this component, such does not light up. The wires on both ends can be switched to either pathway. First lock the wire into place. This construction simulates a corridor linking the two rooms where there are switches at either end, allowing the user greater convenience to turn the light on. Can you put it back in? No, 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 no. Yes, sir. Wait, what? Wait, switch it to this one. Just I was scared of dentists and the dark